All right, this video is for every woman out there who has suffered abuse, who has been lied about and attacked, who has lost a child. And I'm hoping that me sharing my story and the truth about what has really happened to me over the last four years, no matter how hard it is for me to share, help somebody else and give somebody else strength and hope that no matter how bad it gets, God is with you. And as long as you have faith and you continue to do the right things, you will always, always be protected. And I have a lot of faith and I am so grateful for all the things God has done for my life. And I wanna heal. I wanna be happy. I want to be a mom again. I wanna be able to fall in love and you know, marry somebody who truly loves me and supports me in my work and my walk through grief. And part of me getting to that point in my life is being honest and, and being heard. And I feel like over the last four years, I have not been hurt. And I have suffered abuse that is unspeakable since the loss of my son. And during that time, I have poured my heart into helping the community, into learning as much as I can to build the strongest foundation, to be a resource to families. And I, I was successful at that. But during this time, nobody was taking care of me. And I was so consumed in taking care of Aiden's legacy and families and trying to stay so busy that I, I don't completely fall apart that I didn't take care of me either. And now that I'm doing that, another step in my process is to be heard and tell the truth. And since I lost my little boy, I have been a victim of fraud. I have been a victim of emotional abuse. I have been a victim of the Nevada court system. I have been a victim of so many things. And I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of proving something that has already been proven. And I find myself so many times praying on my knees, asking God, why did this happen? Why would I lose my son and then be thrown into a circle of such ugly people? And Along this journey, I I would repent and say whatever I've done, you know, before that brought this on me, God, forgive me. Just forgive me and let me get past it. Let me learn and let me grow. And this has gone on for four years and I still have faith. I still know at some point God is going to step in and intervene and I just have to keep hanging in there and keep learning and keep growing and find the lesson in why God has had me go through all of this. And I don't want this dark cloud over me anymore. I want to help kids. I want to throw parties. I want to build resources. And I'm so good at doing that. And to have a situation where I married a man for 60 days, allow me to be put through four years of endless litigation and abuse to where now they're accusing me of crimes, of, of murderous threats, of threatening, threatening people that would murder them. When I have now had to close my office in Nevada, I have now had to leave the house that I was forced to live in for three years. I 
have been denied representation by the entire state of Nevada. I have been forced as a victim of a crime to represent myself against the people who have victimized me. And all of this could have been prevented, all of it. I reported this early on and along the time I was reporting this, I had attorneys. I had Chris Tillman and Jennings and Fulton Law Firm for two years, two years they committed legal malpractice and nobody stopped them. Nobody helped me. And in May of 2020, I caught them all. Two years after I reported very clear notary fraud, which means the deed wasn't valid. So it was not community property. So there was no divorce. I was entitled to annulment. And they were able to do this because I trusted my attorneys. And they kept telling me to wait for my court date, wait for my court date. So as I reported it to the police, they did nothing to advocate for me. As I reported it to the Secretary of State, they acknowledged that Nikki Sakakis bot was the notary. And she was also the, also the escrow agent. That is clear fraud. So at that point in, December of 2018, everybody had the information of fraud. And instead of ever helping me, they all played off of the trauma I was already experiencing and intentionally added more. They insured, made, made sure that I had no insurance, so I had no access to therapy. They made sure that my fees to them were so high that I was working nights to pay them and working in the day to build my son's legacy. And this went on for two and a half years until February of 2020, where they held a two day trial and again violated my rights as a victim of a crime and made me go through two days of excruciating testimony when they already had clear evidence that the deed wasn't valid. And from that point, the attacks began. When I caught Raina Hughes, Jennings and Fulton, Shumway Van, and Chris Tillman all committing fraud, and then the misconduct of the Secretary of State, the County Recorder, the Attorney General, and all the lawyers, I then became their target. And my foundation became their target. And as I continue to report this abuse to everybody, every plea has been ignored. And over the last four years, I have been stolen from, defrauded, lied about, hit, and I was even raped. And Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department did absolutely nothing to help me at all. Now, I have been begging for help for a year for legal counsel, which is my constitutional right. And they have denied that right and have continued to label me a criminal, take away my right to be heard, and now are taking the proceeds from my house and splitting it amongst themselves. And the lies continue to grow and grow and the bullying continues. And I don't know what else to do at this point. I have contacted civil rights activists. I have contacted lawyers. I, I have contacted all the police departments. I've went through every process that I could possibly go through and I have gotten help from absolutely nobody. So I'm hoping that me sharing this story helps somebody else, somebody else that might be in the same legal situation and they don't know that they're being taken for a ride. Or, you know, a mom that has felt after the loss of their child that you no longer wanna be here and you know, as much as I've gone through, and as you guys hear the 
what's transpired over the last four years, I'm still so grateful. I'm grateful for my life. I'm grateful for my foundation. I'm grateful for the people who love and support me and the relationships that I've been able to mend. And I'm hoping by me telling the story and me getting all of this off my chest allows me to move on. I don't know if anybody will ever come and help me. If there's ever going to be a lawyer that's willing to expose so many law firms and over 15 judges all the way up to the federal level. And, you know, that's going to be rare because they don't prosecute each other. And even if they had the morals to represent me in this matter, it would probably ruin their own career because everybody around them would then shun them because they would be exposing so many. You would be pretty much taking down the whole Nevada judicial system because everybody, I've told everybody. So I hope you guys tune in as I share this story in two parts. And one of the lies I wanna address right away and all the evidence, once I post the videos, I will post on my Facebook page, Equality and Justice Now. You guys can follow that page. You can sign the petition on www.change.org forward slash justice for Aiden's mom in hopes that we can get enough support to get Congress involved because a 60 day marriage where there was clear notary fraud and he clearly admitted I wasn't there. And for them to be able to take this on to four years and put me through the abuse that I've been put through and then now attack my work and create these fake orders that are now encouraging companies who once supported Aiden's Army of Angels to no longer support the foundation, which for me is only hurtful because there's so many sick kids. There's so many kids that need help and it's so hard for me to build those resources. So to have somebody victimize me by committing fraud in the first place, by using corrupt judges and lawyers, and then be able to go to companies that I've worked so hard to build their support and get them to now not support us is insult upon injury. So this is why I'm sharing my story. And once I'm done, I'm done. I'm going to move on with my life and I don't know how long I'll be stuck in this marriage. I don't know how long I will be stuck in endless litigation where I have to represent myself while everybody gets away with what they've done. But I'm hoping with your guys' help and support that we can make this story big enough to bring change, bring change in our justice system, bring equality into our justice system and allow me to find peace and joy in my life again and simply help kids. That's all I wanna do. So I hope you guys subscribe to my YouTube channel, Lindsay Lakari Life After Loss, where I will go into exactly what has happened over the last four years. And please follow Equality and Justice on Facebook so that you can see all of the evidence so you know it's not just a story that I'm telling, that this is the truth. And we'll start with this lie that they have um, on social media. And it's a S Steve Sanson. And this guy is somebody I don't know. I met him right before he didn't pass away. And he would hit on me and I'd turn him down. And he has a, a show. And through Facebook, I saw that he fought for father's rights. So when I reached out to him initially, I was trying to help Bobby because he had no rights to his kids. And this guy gave me some information. I gave it to Bobby and didn't speak to him again forever. So when I caught Raina Hughes in May of 2020 fabricating her ruling and my attorneys conspiring with the opposing counsel, I reached out to him again because I had heard that he had also had problems with Raina Hughes. So he calls me in to come in and I'm, I'm trying to talk to him about it. 
and he throws me on this show and he just keeps asking all these questions about um, bashing Raina Hughes and I'm trying to explain to him about them removing my evidence and somehow along I've never actually watched the videos but somewhere along they say I lied about going to see a little girl and I'm um, going to her funeral which again is absolutely not a lie they when I wrote this statement it was a year after Aiden had passed away in a year of trauma of, of Chris Tillman representing me and doing absolutely nothing. And in December, I found out that Nikki Sakakis bot forged my name. So she acted as the notary and the escrow agent and she collected commissions. She cannot do that. Her neighbor then came and, and fraudulently conveyed the documents in Bobby Antti's name. So when I'm on this show, he says, did you go see this little girl? And I said, no. And in the thing, in the statement I had wrote, I was not there because I had went to see the little girl at her funeral. So this is what makes it so ridiculous. They're asking me a year later. And when I go back through my text messages after the trial, two years of having attorneys, I read my messages from the little girl's mom. And the little girl was not, did not pass away in January, on January 17th. On January 17th, I was trying to fly her and her family to Las Vegas to have, to help her have some final wishes. And this was what my communication was with the mom over the last, from the 15th to the 17th. I scheduled a flight to go see the little girl and bring her toys and a check on the 14th. I did not realize I scheduled on the 14th. I went to the airport on the 15th and on the 15th, they told me my flight was the day before. So I then reach out to the little girl's mom and I tell her, hey, I didn't talk to you and should I get another flight? And she tells me, no, maybe we'll come out there. And this is, Bobby admits this in the trial tape. So if you look at the trial tapes, he says, I was upset because I wanted a family from Washington, D.C. to come to our house, which he was absolutely right. I wanted to fly her out there and I wanted to take her to Disneyland and I wanted to make her have as much joy as she could before she was not able to have joy. And Bobby did not want them at our house. He didn't want the family there. And so they didn't come. Well, the following month, the little girl passed away. I schedule a flight and I fly out there and I'm there with her mom and we send her off back to heaven. So a year later when they asked me, I didn't even remember that we that I was supposed to go there in January because I missed the flight and I never got on it. All I remembered was I went to her funeral. So they're taking this story and twisting it completely around and saying, hey, look at her, she lies about going to a kid's funeral. And I would absolutely never lie about any part of my work. I'm a mother who lost a child who has been through so much trauma and two years of my lawyers trying to convince me that it was community property and that I, um, I'm slandering Linda Na Purdue. Linda Na Purdue is a criminal and they were all sitting there together at that closing and they all fraudulently conveyed title knowingly and did not care what they were doing to me in the position that they would have put me in by putting everything my son raised in the name of Bobby Ante. And then spent this whole time rewarding him, re rewarding him for allowing them to attack me when he knew he was entitled to nothing and he was part of the fraud. So I'm gonna post all the evidence from exactly what I just said about Steve Sanson, their veteran in politics video. And you can see that why I was pouring my heart into helping a family and trying to help this little girl, they were busy robbing me blind and in one month stole 
everything that my son had raised. So this is part of my healing is I want to tell the truth. I want the story to come out. I don't want to be attacked anymore. I want to help families in peace. I have built a resource that is strong and beautiful and helps so many children all over the world. And I love what I do. And I should not have to defend myself as a victim of a crime. I should not have to defend my work. I should not have had to go through four years of pure hell. Why all these people simply tried to get away with a crime. And now... To have so much evidence against so many judges, so many lawyers, so many government workers, and to have absolutely nobody who protects me is hurtful. And I'm hoping that you guys all join me in bringing change to our justice system. And I hope that my story encourages somebody out there who feels like they're ready to give up, who feels like they can't keep going, that I keep, I keep going and I don't give up. And I don't give up because I have faith. I have faith in God. I have faith in the process. And I have faith that at some point, I'm going to get justice. And, you know, I was listening to a Les Brown video. And he says, at what point do you stop asking for help? I will stop asking for help when I get the help. That's when I will stop asking for help. So please read more about this story on change.org share and tune in for the two part where I'm going to tell the entire story. And I pray that some miracle changes what I'm going through today.